I'm David Toman, author of NootropicsExpert.com, and in this video I'm going to share with you what I know about vitamin B3, or niacin, as a nootropic. What it is, why we use it, the science behind it, dosage, and side effects. Vitamin B3, or nicotinic acid, is a precursor to the coenzymes NAD and NADP. Niacin is found in and critical for the health of every cell in your body. NADH is the reduced form of NAD, making it the active form, which can donate electrons. NADH is the primary carrier of electrons for glu from glucose and lactate for ATP synthesis. ATP is the fuel source for your mitochondria, the power supply in each one of your brain cells. So you need niacin to produce NADH to transfer the energy from the food you eat into a type of energy your body can use. Niacin naturally occurs in foods like eggs, fish, meat, milk, peanuts, mushrooms, green vegetables, and yeast. Your body also naturally synthesizes niacin from the amino acid tryptophan you get from food. This synthesis requires vitamin B6, riboflavin, and an enzyme containing iron. But only about 2% of dietary tryptophan is converted to niacin. Not nearly enough that your body requires, which is why supplementation is needed. Niacin supplementation has been used to treat addiction, ADHD, arthritis, Alzheimer's, depression, memory loss, and even schizophrenia and for detoxing nearly every foreign substance that can find its way into your fat cells. As a nootropic, niacin helps boost cognition, memory, and neuroplasticity. Well first, niacin increases cellular energy. Niacin is a precursor to NAD. NAD acts as an electron carrier meaning it can, can accept and donate electrons to various enzymes involved in energy metabolism. NAD is transformed into NADH. NADH then donates its electron to the electron transport chain where a number of ATP molecules are formed. Using niacin as a supplement increases the available NAD molecules that can take part in energy metabolism and increasing the amount of energy in each cell. By providing the means for ATP synthesis, niacin is involved in cognition, focus, concentration, memory, and processing speed. And niacin plays an important role in mediating brain aging and tissue damage even decreasing the damage caused by strokes. Now researchers at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston study the neuroprotective effect of CoQ10 and niacin in most models of Parkinson's. Impaired energy metabolism has been associated with some of the symptoms of Parkinson's. Researchers administered MPTP, which is the, the, a, a poison to neurons, it disrupts the energy metabolism of neurons that release dopamine. The affected dopamine cells are also unable to release much glutamate, which results in decreased dopamine in people with Parkinson's. The combination of CoQ10 and niacin protected against both mild and moderate dopamine depletion. The researchers concluded that CoQ10 and niacin improves mitochondrial energy production. In the second way, niacin increases brain-derived nootropic factor, or BDNF. BDNF has been termed miracle grow for the brain. Higher levels of BDNF have been associated with increased intelligence, mood, productivity, and memory. Researchers at Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit tested the hypothesis that niacin could increase synaptic plasticity and axon growth in stroke patients. In this case they used male Wistar rats who were purposely given a stroke and then treated with extended release niacin, a product called niaspan, for 14 days. Niacin increased synaptic plasticity and axon growth as a result of restored BDNF. 
Another study published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism showed that niacin stimulated growth hormone. Research has shown that people with low niacin levels are far more vulnerable to addiction, depression, heart disease, schizophrenia, and other chronic conditions. Low niacin levels can happen at any age, even at birth. Niacin can improve cholesterol levels. Supplementing with niacin has been shown to help those who are at increased risk for heart attacks, strokes, and other forms of heart disease. Niacin can help uh, reduce hardening of the arteries, or arteriosclerosis, and assist in avoiding heart disease, and niacin helps reduce inflammation. Niacin plays a role in diabetes treatment because it helps balance blood sugar levels. Niacin helps reduce skin inflammation, flare-ups, irritation, um, redness, and for treating severe cases of acne. Niacin can help protect against Alzheimer's and dementia. Niacin supplementation is also associated with decreased risk for age-related cognitive decline, memory loss, migraines, depression, motion sickness, insomnia, and even alcohol dependence. Niacin is also used for treating and to help prevent schizophrenia. Studies show that niacin supplementation lowers the risk or severity of ADHD. Niacin is an effective treatment for erectile dysfunction because it acts as a vasodilator that helps improve blood flow to the penis. Niacin supplementation can help relieve depression and anxiety. Circulation should improve and you should feel uh, like you have more energy. People taking statins to control cholesterol report severe side effects. But when adding niacin to their supplement stack, most experience a reduction in blood pressure. And some have stopped taking statins as a result. Those dealing with obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD, report combining niacin with St. John's wort reduces OCD symptoms and was better than using Prozac or a benzo the benzodiazepine um, lorazepam. Taken before bedtime, some neurohackers report a reduction in insomnia. Lower back pain and hip pain may be reduced with niacin supplementation. And niacin can help reduce severe acne and other skin inflammation problems. Now naturally we have lots more um, in the way of clinical studies when it comes to niacin or vitamin B3. I'm not going to go into detail for them here, but I do have a clinical study on how niacin helps reduce bad cholesterol. I've got another clinical study on how niacin is used for detox. I've got another study on how uh, niacin is used to help treat depression. And another one for how niacin is used for the treatment of erectile dysfunction. So if you want to see these studies in more detail, please go to NootropicsExpert.com and search for niacin, or click on the link below this video. Niacin is naturally produced in your body from tryptophan, and you can get niacin from eating certain foods, including beef, chicken, tuna, sunflower seeds, salmon, green peas, turkey, and mushrooms. So niacin is considered non-toxic and safe. Note that higher doses of niacin are usually divided into evenly split doses uh, so that you're taking it two to four times a day. So two grams of niacin, for example, daily would be 500 milligrams four times a day. Now there's a lot of different ways to dose niacin depending on what you're trying to treat, and I'm not going to go into all the detail here. Uh, I've got more detail over on the original transcript of this video on Nootropics Expert. But for example, for the prevention of heart disease, um, 4 grams per day, lowering bad cholesterol, 4 grams per day, for reduced risk of cataracts, 44 milligrams of niacin per day, for preventing Alzheimer's, 100 milligrams of niacin per day. So there's plenty more um, over on NootropicsExpert.com. Standard niacin or nicotinic acid is naturally produced in your body and considered non-toxic. Niacin can lower blood pressure, so if you are on blood pressure lowering medication, be cautious when supplementing with niacin. 
Niacin can may decrease the effectiveness of diabetes medication because long-term use of niacin can increase blood sugar. So you may need to increase your diabetes meds. Statins are notorious for causing muscle wasting. And when combined with niacin, it may increase this muscle wasting problem. So you may want to cut back on your statins as you increase your niacin dose. Many stop taking statins altogether when using niacin. Niacin or nicotinic acid um, and sustained released niacin can cause flushing in many people. And here I'm going to address how to reduce and sometimes even eliminate the side effects of niacin flushing. Regular immediate release niacin or nicotinic acid causes flushing in many people and so they avoid supplementing with niacin as a result. Standard niacin flushing results from activation of the niacin receptor uh, which is a G protein coupled receptor in the skin and specific cells called Langerhans cells. This leads to a production of uh, prostaglandins, including prostaglandin D2 and prostaglandin E2, which act uh, on the receptors in the capillaries or the small blood vessels in your skin. This flushing sensation comes from blood vessel dilation and it can manifest itself as redness, warmth of the skin, and tingling or itching. And it happens rapidly and it lasts for about an hour. Now this flushing sensation is not an allergic reaction. It only feels uncomfortable. So here are some strategies for avoiding this niacin flushing. First, slow release niacin may prevent flushing but is not the answer because it will not provide the LDL cholesterol lowering benefits. And it may be toxic to your liver when using it long term. Inositol hexanicotinate is commonly referred to as no flush niacin or flush free niacin and is preferred by many neurohackers. Now even though I've seen a couple of clinical studies claiming that this version of niacin has no effect on lipid profiles um, when it comes to cholesterol, when you read the user reviews they consistently report exactly the opposite, that it does help lipid profiles and cholesterol levels. They do not experience flushing when using IH, even at high doses. And their cholesterol and triglyceride levels all benefited at the same time within a healthy range. A newer version of the extended release niacin called Niaspan does produce some, fl does produce some flushing effect and has been shown to have the same effects on good cholesterol and triglycerides as instant release niacin. Niaspan is prescription only and is now available as a prescription generic drug at lower cost. One effective way to reduce flushing with ni instant release niacin and extended release niacin is to take 225 milligrams of an aspirin tablet 30 minutes before you take your niacin. And you can also try splitting your dose of niacin into smaller doses um, and take it throughout the day. The flushing will be reduced if not completely eliminated. And long-term niacin users note that this flushing goes away after about a week of long-term niacin use. Vitamin B3 or niacin is not stored in your body and must be ingested daily from food or as a supplement. Niacin as a supplement comes in several forms. First, there's niacin or nicotinic acid, or the free form nicotinic acid. Uh, even at larger doses of three or four grams are nearly completely absorbed in, by the adult body. This version causes flushing above 50 milligrams, which can be avoided. A little bit earlier in this video, we talked about side effects on how to avoid this flushing. Doses above 1,500 milligrams per day of this version of niacin can be toxic to your liver. And then we have niacinamide, which has a similar profile to that of freeform niacin, but unlike freeform niacin, does not produce this flushing effect. But doses above 3 grams per day can be toxic to your liver. 
And then we have slow-release niacin, which is um, nicotinic acid using an ion exchange or wax matrix developed to slow the release of niacin to avoid this flushing effect. Liver toxicity has been shown in doses above 500 milligrams of extended release niacin. And then we have inositol hexanicotinate, or IH, which is extended release niacin, and it's sold as flush free niacin, and has six molecules of niacin covalently bonded to one molecule of inositol. The IH version of niacin does not produce uh, a flushing effect, and studies show that an average of 70% of the dose you take gets absorbed by your body. Now studies show that the benefits to lowering bad cholesterol with the IH form of niacin are not nearly as effective as free-form niacin, but user reviews are the opposite to these clinical findings, and no toxicity is associated with high doses of IH. And then there's a brand called Slow Niacin, which is sold over the counter, and Niaspan, which is an extended release niacin formula sold as a prescription drug. Now note that both slow release niacin and extended release niacin or inositol hexanicotinate are marketed and labeled as flush free niacin, but they are not the same. And you should avoid slow release niacin. They're two different things. Slow release niacin causes liver toxicity at relatively low doses and does not provide the lipid balancing effects like free-form niacin and extended release niacin. So my neutrophic exit recommendation for niacin or nicotinic acid is 1,000 milligrams three times a day. And that's my report on niacin. If you want to see links to the studies I talked about, go to neutrophicsexpert.com and search for vitamin B3 or niacin. Or click on the link below this video. 